like this song. Mm. Try to say it or do. Welcome I'm back to the PO3 podcast. My name is Marcus Marks. Just John. So it's been a good what? Three months? No, pr- like four, right? Four, Almost bro. Four. Yeah. October, I think. Or b- even b- before that, huh? Because October's the 10th, so... Honestly, I haven't September? even... I haven't even looked. Let me see. <clears throat> is the last upload the last one we did? I mean, that's... We shoot them, like... Remember, we shoot them, like, two, three weeks before they even get uploaded? So I'm not even sure. Uh, let me see. I got it right here. Hold on. So three months ago is when uh, we up... I uploaded the last one. But that wasn't the last one we shot, though. That was episode 46. We actually have, I think... No, I think that was it. We have 47, 48. Yeah, we have 47, 48. Well, and this was gonna... uh, September 6th. So September, October, November, December. Yeah, five months, bro. So it's been a long time. Um, well, <clears throat> I think we just go ahead and uh, upload with this one. I'm not going to lie. It feels weird just doing this again. Like, where do I, where do I start? <laughs> I don't even know what to do. <laughs> You're just like, it's like, remember when you came out here for the first time? That's how I feel now. Coming out here for the first time. <clears throat> well, I think this one should just to catch everybody up since there's been such a massive delay in uploads. <clears throat> well, not delay, but just a significant uh, uh, period of time. Yeah, well, basically what happened, we talked about it in the last one, remember? Where I, was, I was starting work and then um, mm-hmm. I was going to the gym a lot. And then on top of that, I was like, I'm ready to go to work. And then that that basically consumed all of my time between work and working out. There was just no way like to fit in the podcast with the amount of time that it takes to edit. And and then for a while, it it kind of was the last thing on my mind just because I was so like laser focused on getting back into the real world again, you know? Yeah, priorities? <clears throat> priorities, yeah. But over like slowly but surely, I want to say like maybe a month or two after we stopped shooting, I really started missing doing the podcast. I, I started watching our own stuff, listening to our own stuff again. And sure enough, man, I just started really missing it and wanted to do it. So I've been had the itch for a while to do podcasting and get back in here, man, and just like update everybody and then keep the channel going. Because like, I d- I never wanted to quit in the first place. You know what I mean? I never wanted to stop doing this. I don't know how you feel. You know, yeah, I agree, bro. Like, it was funny because there were some times where it was just like, as much as like doing it, I was like, damn, I got to drive to Fresno. Yeah. You know? And then after like the first couple of weeks, we didn't do it. I was like, ah, you know, whatever. Good little break, huh? And then I wouldn't say it was a good break, but it was like a break. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Because like uh, I didn't, I like doing them. Yeah. You know, but after like the first month, I'm like, damn, this is like, it was part of my, like my Monday or Tuesday routine. You know, we had yeah. to come over here and, you know, get a couple out. And then a month goes by and it's just uh-huh. like. Damn, because I, I had some like talks at work. Nothing of any like significance, but it's just like, damn, this would have been cool to talk about on like podcast with Mark, yeah. you know? And then of course, like, even for a while there, I wasn't even listening to podcasts in general. I got like just n- my normal routine was just like consuming podcasts, getting information. Then I got kind of got burnt out on it. Mm. And then I kind of went, okay, I'm just gonna listen to some music. Yeah. And then I don't know what what prompted me. I want to stop doing that, by the way. I I was listening to our podcast. And oh, I did hate, you catch anything that you well, say I, too much? I keep like smacking my lips, I used, I used to do that too. I said, I, there was a lot of little things like that. Uh, <clears throat> so, you guys take a shot every time I <laughs> decide to go. I say, uh, a lot. And then I used to pronounce where as were. Mm. And then uh, there, there was a couple other things that I did that I used to do a lot. <laughs> little weird quirks. But, over, but by the time you came on the podcast, I had already been working on correcting those little issues. And, um… Slowly but surely, I, I started taking care of them, and then I would catch myself in the middle of doing it and be like, "Oh, like I can't, yep. I can't." So that was my mind was like, "Yeah, so I was." It was driving me nuts. It's almost like a tick, right? Like a nervous tick. Yeah, it, yeah, maybe I don't know what it is. I just noticed, like, damn, I do that a lot. But isn't that the cool thing about like seeing yourself and listening to yourself? You, you get to catch these little things, which translate better in real life. Because when you're when you're conversing in real life, you're probably doing the same thing. Yeah. You know, I was not aware of it, <laughs> yeah. you know, so, and no one's ever pointed it out to me either. So it was like, uh, I was like, damn, that I keep. Like, you know what, you know what helped me a lot realize, uh, like, and it translated well in real life is not cutting people off so much when we, when we talk. Because remember when you first got here, even your girl mentioned, she was like, man, he cuts you off a lot. 
Oh yeah. I was like yeah. a bad driver in traffic. I would just cut everybody off. <laughs> no <laughs> like <signals>. mid conversation. <laughs> yeah. But I anyway, had- to go back to real quick, sorry. But uh to go back to like the absence. Um Yeah. Dude, like I, I got like hit on my my got back on my podcast kick again. I was just started listening to him and I was like, okay, I I wanna I want to do this again, man. You mm-hmm. know, and I reached out to you a couple times, and it was just scheduling differences. Uh, God, I did it again. <laughs> it's all right. Just um, ignore it. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, right? Uh, scheduling differences, though, made it really, <laughs> it made it hard for us to. I'm probably not going to care anymore because I don't. I'm putting too much effort. Honestly, I didn't even notice it until you brought it up. Uh, <laughs> that 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 right there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just fuck it. Just keep going. Uh, yeah, our scheduling differences, man, made a big. <laughs> don't look at me, bro. I'm do right. it on purpose. Uh, it made it hard, you know. And so I now now we kind of made it a point to make it happen. And I can I hope going forward that we can continue to maybe not on the same frequency that we did it, but at least make a conscious effort to get it done. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, because I'm on the same page as you. I want to keep doing this, and I, like I said, I never wanted to stop in the first place. It's just you know life happens. You know what I mean. And and now coming back into the podcast, I have a way different perspective than I did previously because I hadn't been in the real world, so to speak. I was kind of in my own little world, and now I'm like, I don't know. The world is a lot different now, though. I mean, granted, people's like people's behaviors and everything are just so much different than what I remember. Working retail before everyone's just I don't know man there's just there's just something I can't really put my finger on it but something shifted over over these last few years man I don't know know if you've noticed it in people but there's just something weird going is it like a behavioral like obviously behavioral but I mean like uh, are people more demanding now like it's more about like like narcissism is kind of like running rapid power trip yeah just because I feel like what I noticed is everything's about me. Yeah, you know, as, when it comes to an individual, I feel like everyone's ungrateful. Yeah, I would say that's a probably a fair assessment. And, um, and it, honestly, it's a it's a it's a disgusting trait to have. You know what I mean? Selfish, demanding, self centered. I mean, that's the same as selfish, but like the way just people are presenting themselves, and it's 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 it. Uh, I don't know, man. Just working with people after it's been so long, I don't ever remember it being that way. And it's a turnoff, you know what I mean? But I mean, what are you going to do? But there's there's really no way around it anymore. Okay. To, to touch on what you just said. So, and I think this illustrates perfectly what you're talking about. It, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. There was one day I went to Jack in the Box, mm-hmm. right? And I was ordering the drive-thru and at the end of at, at the end of every item I order or something, I'm like, hey, thank you. Or please, please, thank you. The lady left her mic on. Mm-hmm. for the little speaker box. And so she's like, all right, please pull forward to the next one. I was like, all right, cool, thank you. And then she goes, oh my God, he was the nicest person I think I've ever had come to this drive-thru. And all I was saying was please and thank you. And you weren't even like trying to be extra. I wasn't trying to be extra. Just that's how I was raised, you know, just please and thank you. And uh, so to me, that kind of, the fact that I wasn't doing anything in particular. Other Says than just, a lot. It's exactly <laughs> my point. Thank you. You know, it's like, what? Just regular ass manners. It wasn't like I was trying, like I had like, okay, I got to say please and thank you 14 times in this whole transaction. It was just how I was raised and like how it's so, it's probably not out there as much as it used to be, you know, and to the point where she had to tell whoever she was talking to, not realizing her thing was still on, that that uh, that was the nicest order she's ever taken or something. What did you, you tell her when you got to the window? I, I didn't bring it up. Oh, okay. You know but, but, but internally you... you- to, to, I mean, it was kind of a, like a. I don't think it's a reflection of me. I think it was just a reflection of my upbringing and how I was like that was instilled in me to be courteous and polite to people. Uh, but it was kind of like, how bad is it that you're able to take something as simple as that and make that like maybe I don't say it was a highlight of her day, but it was definitely worth her mentioning to her coworker. Yeah, obviously she wouldn't have said anything. So, so how bad is it in between those, you know? Or not maybe not bad, but how infrequent is it that she gets those types of, you know, I guess… Uh, well, I mean, coming from my perspective, I mean, I work retail, so it's very demanding. And people, um, they don't, they just don't give a shit. Like, I'll literally be… I'll, 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 I'm clearly busy. Just put it that way. And I'll have my, my hands full, literally. And 
still people will just, excuse me, hello, over here, like all about me, me, like, because when I'm in a store or going anywhere, if I see somebody's busy, I'll just wait. You know what I mean? Or if there's a line, I'll get in the line and wait. But th- people just don't act like that anymore. There's no, there's no etiquette and decorum anymore. It's just, it's, 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 it's almost like, just, it's just chaotic. You know, people have no patience left. It's almost like everyone's at the end of the rope or some shit. Yeah, uh, that's a that's pretty damn accurate. At least I, in my eyes, I just don't know how you to. Know, granted, it. I'm guilty of that person too. Like I'll see, like, hey, I understand you're busy. Can you just point me in a certain direction? I don't need you to yeah. like, you know, hey, if you go around the corner on the, we'll just say, I don't know, in your case, the uh, fragrance section, you know, left side, you can shoot. All right, cool. I'll, I'll find it from there. Or I'll find somebody else. You know, because uh, sometimes you know, going in into retail, you see that there's plenty of people. Working, but they're all busy as hell, especially mm-hmm. on the holidays. So it's like, well, either I stop you real quick, dude. I know you're busy and you're probably going to hate me for it, but I, it'll get me on to my thing quicker. And I'm not saying like, hey, can you detour yourself from where you're headed to mm-hmm. take me? Or just point me in the right direction so I know where I'm looking. Yeah, that's not how people are. Like, that would be putting it mildly. Like, I'd be appreciative if somebody would just come out and say that, but it's not like that. It's just like… Imagine I'm just going, I'm, I'm walking and they grab you by the shirt and <laughs> just pull, pull you back. Yeah, but, but like, honestly, now when that happens, like, I just try to like, I zone out. Like, I just don't even make eye contact anymore. I'm just like, one at a time. What can I do? And you know, the crappy part about that situation is that if it, it affects you as a, as a CSR, you know, a captain sales representative, customer, but, oh. <laughs> but you know, because yeah. like they always teach, you know, you got to be hospitable to your customers and nice. But it's like, how do you expect me to be that way if they're being I was gonna d bags to me the entire time and not? I was gonna courteous? say it makes me seem like I have a different character than I truly have, and yeah, it makes it, it seem like I'm not a nice person. You know what I mean? Because you can only have your buttons pressed so many times before you just reach a point where you're just like, you know what? I'm not gonna put up with this shit anymore. You know what I mean? I'm gonna. Do what I have to do just to get through the day to prevent myself from becoming angry. And a lot of times, it, even then, it's still… A lot of people just fly off the handle, you know? But yeah, it, it makes you look like you're a different person than you actually are. Because actually are. I was thinking about this the other day. I got a customer and it, it just… For whatever reason, they were just like… They, would just, they, they wouldn't shut the fuck up, you know what I mean? Like, there's just one question after the other, after the other, after the other. And… I'm just like, hey, I'm like, I'm trying to help you, but like, you're not helping yourself really. Like, you just keep asking a million questions. It's like, I'm trying to do one thing. You're making me back, go back and redo what I just did. And then, and then it's like, she, it almost made it seem like now I'm, I'm, <laughs> I was made out to be the bad person, you know, because of the way that this person was acting. But it's like, how are you supposed to handle that? You know what I mean? At the end of the transaction, she's like, Jesus, Jesus Christ. And this and that. I was like, Bro, like I wish I could it, tell you what I think of you right now. No, but but it's not even that though. But it's like if she knew me outside of this place, if mm-hmm. it was the if the meeting was more cordial, it'd be a completely different interaction than when the power is shifted. Was this you know prior what I mean? to Christmas? After. Oh wow! This That's was like, just dude, a couple like, days ago. I'm just like, damn, lady. Like, I I get it. it. The holidays get hectic. You know, you're looking for something specific. You're it, you haven't found it. And maybe it's a hot item and there's not a lot of them left. And you're, you know, I get it. You know, the tensions are high, yada, yada, yada. That's, that's what I was asking. But again, man, just a little bit of courtesy goes so damn far. But it was just the fact that like the, the, the way that I was thinking about it was she thinks I'm this person because of the way she's behaving. When really, that's not even the person that I am. You know, I would like, I, I, I try to think of myself as a pretty nice person. I I also say, please and Thank you. And I don't think I've ever… I mean, I've had my moments. Don't get me wrong. I've had my moments shopping and this and that. Um, but I feel like for the most part, I'm a, a, a decent person. You know, when I go out and I treat people with respect, I would like to. Um, so it's like, if aside that interaction, it would have been a completely different experience for the both of us, you know. And then in the back of my head, I'm just like, man, if you only knew, like, I'm not here to fight you. You know, you know how many times I've had to tell people that? It's like, hey, I'm not trying to fight you. Like, I'm on your side. Like, I'm trying to help you. And still, they just, for whatever reason, they try to make it personal. And people, I just, like I said, that goes back to, there's just something different going on now. And I think it's just the pressures of the way that the world is. The direction that we're headed, it, it, it seems to be affecting a lot of people. Without even, without them even knowing it, really. They, you know, 
Yeah, I think that's that's true because I know there's been I don't I'm sure there's a study about it, but it's been said that like you know um, suicide rates are on the rise. Uh, like I guess mental health. I don't want to know better word like a breakdown. You yeah. know, people are boiling point. Yeah, because people aren't living the lives they're accustomed to living because of this pandemic stuff that we're still dealing with going three years in. Yeah. And uh, and so it's having, you know, some societal effects, you know. And uh, I, I think that is likely what you're experiencing right now, too. Is I, I feel like we're experiencing the aftershock of all this shit. Yeah, I mean, like... I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure you don't like anybody telling you what to do. Because I'm that same way. Like, granted, who it's coming from and what it's about, you know, that's, you know... Context, yeah. yeah. But... In general, I just don't want some random person telling me, hey, you can't go do that. Well, what the hell am not? Can I go do that? Is it illegal? No. Yeah. So then I'm out, you know, even if I don't want to do it, now I'm going to want to do it. You yeah. Know? And I think with this whole COVID thing that we're still dealing with, uh, it, it's... Which I think has gotten way it, it, far yeah, out of hand, man. It's, it's just I, I to believe, the point where, like, fuck you if you want to talk about it right now. I don't want to hear it. And uh, exactly. And... I think that's playing into people's lack of temper. Mm -hmm. You know, they just... Yeah, people's fuses seem to be really, really mm -hmm. short nowadays, including my own. I mean, I don't know. I, I've definitely lengthened the, <laughs> the, my, my fuse by, by quite a bit just by practicing what I've been practicing these last almost a year. I'm, I'm two months away from uh, a year of my deciding to start my diet and working out. It's almost a year and in March it'll be a year. So we're two months away. Um, so over that that uh, period of time, I've learned how to more or less, not more or less, but like control my emotions a lot better. So I've lengthened that fuse that it takes for me to reach my boiling point now. And I can really tell it's made a difference, especially in the work world. You know what I mean? Um, but I feel like people don't, a lot of people, they don't take that time to analyze themselves and correct those little flaws that would do so much for themselves. It's just people, they don't, for whatever reason, they just ignore it. I'm you know sure you I mean? can agree with this, or at least maybe <clears throat> see it in some capacity. But people don't like to look at themselves as the as a bad guy. Mm. Yeah, I think it takes a strong-willed person to do some internal reflection and to stare yourself in the face when you're looking in the mirror and be like, "You're the source of some of your problems, and it's your fault that this is happening or why you're this way." And and I don't until people can get more. I don't real, know real. Yeah, just, you know, with themselves. Yeah, exactly. reality check, something. Just like we're, hey, you know what? Maybe the world isn't what it is and maybe I'm part of it. Maybe, maybe the world is what it is, yeah. but maybe I'm actually exacerbating the effects because I'm a certain way and I need to do some reflection. But I agree 100%, man, that the world is, it's a very different, like you said, a different place. Everyone's, it's, it's, everyone's, it's, it's self-centered, like you said. More narcissistic. It's all about me. Uh, you're, you know, you work at this establishment. You're like, I'm your boss because I pay your salary type yeah. thing, you know? And it's like, dude, I get it. I'm here for a wage. I, but you can treat me with common courtesy and respect. I, I just, you know? I just overall don't like people's behavior. I just feel like uh, not something I want to be a part of. And, it, and I've said this before, but like the big, well, one of the huge reasons I never wanted to have kids is um, just because of the way the world is already. And I was listening to a podcast with Action Bronson and Mike Tyson. And they mentioned this little part. Action, uh, Mike asked him if he had kids. And he's like, yeah. And he's all, and Action said, uh, I almost feel guilty for sending them out there into this world because of the way things are. And then um, he's like, I almost feel guilty for it because it's like, I'm the one that put them here and I got to send them out into this chaos, you know? And then Mike Mike Tyson says some like profound shit, but it was but Dude, it was he's like actually pretty down. I'm sorry, but he's actually pretty damn bro, dope, bro. He's like my new spirit animal. Him and Tupac, <laughs> like <laughs> dude, like he's a yeah. I love Mike Tyson. So man. how do you not like? Mike okay, Tyson? so remember the podcast I was telling you about that yeah. they seem to like almost like adopted our colors for that we had for the oh, scheme okay, in the back, yeah. but they changed their stuff to similar colors. Um, let me try to find it real quick, bro, because he said some. Okay, I think it was. Let me see. It's uh, Patrick Bit David podcast I'll show you a funny clip. with Mike Tyson real quick. And dude, I it, it was in the um it was in the comments that someone did because it was a dope ass thing he said about uh discipline, I think it was. Who Mike Tyson? Yeah. 
Yeah, he's he's a really um he's an intellectual to a certain extent. He actually has a lot of like insight on a lot of things. I mean, he's been through so much shit. He's been through a lot of shit, and then he he experiments and back and back, and then he experiments a lot with uh like psychedelics and stuff like that. He talks a lot about the toad and DMT and stuff like that, but he does a lot of self reflection. And it's 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 come full circle for that guy, bro. Can I hear this quote, dude? They were talking about like when he was fighting and training mm-hmm. at a young age, and he says like, you know, I think the question was like, where'd you get your discipline from, or what's your take on discipline? Something well, like that. Custom model, right? And he goes, discipline is doing what you hate to do, but doing it like you love it. Oh, yeah. I read that. I just, the other day or something like that, I came across that as well. And I was just like, dude, that's like a hard-ass line Mm because me included, I think a lot of people need to hear that. Yeah. Because when it comes to being disciplined, like, again, I'm I'm not free of sentiment. Sometimes I'm, what's the easiest way out of this situation? Mm -hmm. You know, and rather than going through the, the paces you should, and even though it's grueling and it's tedious and repetitive, and you hate doing it. Yeah. You you got to do it like you love it to be the best at what it is you're trying to do. Yeah. And I think we need more people like that to teach our future generations, you know? Uh, because, dude, kids today have it so easy. You know? Uh, at least it might. Like, dude, we didn't have this right here. <laughs> oh, yeah. When we were growing up. We didn't have, I mean, literally the entire world at your fingertips. You know, when you wanted to get information, you had to go to a damn library and find the book and hope that someone before you didn't check it out, you know, and then read that damn thing. There was no quick search, you know, for a certain like phrase that would, you know, okay, oh yeah, this phrase is found on page 42. Cool. Yeah. You know, and unappreciative. Um, and dude, I think kids honestly are falling down the same suit of the people that you're talking about at work, you know, just snap my fingers. Hey, no, come here, you. You it's know? definitely a different, let's just, to put it light, mildly, it's definitely a different world from 20, 30 years ago to now. You know what I mean? I would, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm i sure, well, the further back I'm, you go, I'm sure it gets even more. The, but, but but here's the thing. Everything kind of comes full circle. In, in a way, there was never like really peace and people, there's always been problems from like, no matter what generation you ask, like if you ask your your mom or your grandpa, or even, you know, their 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 parents. It's like, they always say, back in my day, it used to be this. It's like, no matter what, like, back in their day, it was always different. And it, it was always the, it should have been this way. Like, no matter who you ask, it's going to be that scenario. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's it's almost like, well, what is What's the right new? way? Yeah. Uh, I get it. I, I think... But it is at changing. At least in this particular topic, I think... They're they're right. Like I don't think anybody can look at today the way things are and in, in aggregate with everybody mm-hmm. and be like, oh, this is better. Like in in a lot of areas, yeah. I mean, hell, we got the best medicine today. We got the yeah. best, you know, forms of treatment, transportation, communication. Mm-hmm. You name it, we're in the best for that. But I think when it comes to like us as a people, morals, dude, those are out the window, dude. But but think about like, it, like okay. the morals in the twenties. I wouldn't like idealistically want that to be a uh, a real thing nowadays. You know what I mean? But, it yeah, was the, way different. Well, yeah, things change and it's evolve, almost like pick your but, era. But I I don't see why we can't take the best of one era and make them current. Yeah. In today's like updating the DSM, <laughs> something like that. You know, yeah. like um or oh, yeah, like okay. So for instance, there's this rapper that I like. His name's Dax. I always send you. Oh yeah. Video. I don't ever if you watch him, and if you don't, I don't care. But I'm gonna send him to you anyway. Uh uh-huh. But he had that the one last one I sent you. He had like this 20 minute straight, you know, verse. He's, he's been up and coming for a while, Dax. And but one of the things that he said in one of his little breakdowns, and I'm gonna chop it up, but it's to the effect of like if if I were to conform. Uh, he's like, I just put my new album out. No one cared about it. And now I'm doing this 20 minute song to get my respect or something like that. But he's like, I bet if I, he's like, I bet if I were to rap about like some bad chicks on an Island, you know, smashing, doing drugs, guns, you know, telling that to kids, even though I don't do any of that, that that would probably make me, you know, get into the, the, in the respectable echelon of rap. And he goes, and he's like, just don't tempt me. You know, I might do it. And that, but his point in saying that was like, we're, we're our morals are completely screwed. Like him talking about like, 
He's like, if I would have did this stuff in the 90s, I would have been famous. Mm-hmm. You know, because people back then liked rap for the lyrics you were putting out and not just for the the dope beat and the little hooks, you know, and and talking about, you know, you know, bad chicks and drugs and money and cars and guns and all this stuff. And he's like, if I do that, yeah, I'm sure I would do, but I don't want to be that person. And I think that paints a picture of where we're at. Yeah, maybe the 20s, you know, sets of standards and morals wouldn't be fitting to today, but I, I guarantee you there's things that we can pick from there that you can apply to today that would make us as a society better, you know? So from each era, I think you can pick yeah, and choose you know? like certain ones that work. Cause like not everything's going to be a 10 out of 10. You're going to hit and miss in some generations. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Whatever rules that you lay out, one out of 10 is not, they're not going to all be bangers. They're not all going to be the idealistic way of living, but yeah, you might get one or two in there that you could take and implement it into the next evolution of, you know, or next chapter. And then use that. And then over time, we have like more of a, a more like solid foundation and guideline to like lead our lives based off of. But people nowadays are not doing that. They're just like trying to like reinvent the wheel almost. Trying to invent, <clears throat> reinvent the wheel in There's a no fashion fundamentals. that only helps them. them. Yeah, yeah. There's no fundamentals either. Like, yeah, more like mo- morally speaking… It's all selfish, self-centered. Like everyone's just like, what can I do to up um, my success? You know what I mean? Or whatever's going to put the attention on me. Like versus like being humble and being uh, the opposite of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I I don't like it, man. I don't like it one bit. Um, I think we're… I think we're coming… We're getting frayed at the ends, man. Because like do you… Like how many people do you really come across that are… First to serve others before themselves, really. You know, how many people do you know like know like that? Like, my fiance is that way. Like, I, I've noticed that about her. She's always putting everybody before herself. And that I think that's a rare thing. Like, nowadays, it's just always, like like you said, it's just me, 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 me. They're, they're out there. But like, as you mentioned, they're… I don't think they're as common as they probably once were. But, but like, I, I if you really a- ask yourself, like, is it… I mean, some people are really like that. But, like, I can't even say the same for myself. Like, if I really truly asked myself, you know what I mean? I think you are in more ways than <clears throat> you'd probably give yourself credit for. Well, uh, I never used to be, though. Put it that you way. You know, like, uh, not, not, I'm not, again, please don't take this as me, like, giving myself a pat on the back. But you don't realize it until you're recognized for it. Mm. And I, uh, in my police academy, they have three awards. It was, like, top cadet you know you got the highest score i was kind of bummed i didn't get that i was like two points behind first but uh top shot and then they had a peer award and then they as a class they said hey where does a peer award everyone vote on who you thought was one of the most helpful influential people during the academy i got voted for it <clears throat> and i was like, damn like i didn't realize i did but now when i look back on it like when our first couple tests came out and people were failing. They said, Hey, one of the people that are doing really good in the class, you guys need to help your classmates hold study groups. No one volunteered for it. I was like, I'll do it, whatever. And for the entire life of my Academy, after every day, they gave me access to the room and I would take notes specifically for the purpose of basically giving a whole other lecture at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And we got out at five. I always tell people to be there at 5.30 so we can start early, finish early. It never happened. People would come straggling at 6, 6.30. So I basically spent well, everyone went out after the, the academy. The ones that were doing good, they went hard, getting by. They went to the bars, partied, did their thing. I was stuck in the classroom helping people. I didn't mind doing it, you know, because my goal was like, hey, if you, you pass the academy is like the pat on the back that I need. I don't need you guys to come tell me. But sometimes you don't realize the stuff you do until someone tells you, hey, thanks for what you've done. Because I didn't think that I was deserving enough of that, you know for that particular award. And I think that's true of a lot of people. You know, maybe your girlfriend doesn't even see the stuff that you'd mentioned that she's doing. And that's just because that's who she is. And until you bring it or someone else brings it to her attention, it might just be just like, oh, I thought everyone was this way. Well, you were the drive through incident. Maybe you didn't even know that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So like, um, it's just one of those things, man. Like, but I feel with that being said, taking myself out of the equation and just using your girlfriend or your fiance as an example, I think people like her are few far in between. I think I, agree. The, I think the culture that we're producing is you need to worry about you, do whatever it is you need to do. If you got to step on 
it's 15 cutthroat. people's heads to get to where you got to go do it. It's like, well, I'm all about being competitive and the best needs to reign supreme, but I don't want to do it, you know, at, at your cost, at the cost of you. I, you know, you know what, what I don't want to see and what's kind of scary is like the world in general, I feel like it's just turning into the music industry. <laughs> like that mindset that I don't know if you know anything about the music industry or ever watched Not a documentary, really. but okay, <laughs> it's like the dirtiest, most grimy shit like you can think of. Even, even like just entertainment in general. You know what I mean? Everybody is just cutthroat. They just use each other to get to the next point in life. And once they're done with that person and they know that they can move on to the next step and they stop using that person, they've served their purpose. You know what I mean? So everybody's just using each other. And everything is about their own attention, you know, to what is what is going to further them in their own career. It's like, I'll, I'll use you, you know, for this. And then you, you served your purpose and now I'm going to move on cut ties or whatever or like stab you in the back to make more money than you and this is I, I feel like the world is like slowly turning into that yeah <clears throat> you know and i'm not trying to bring this into a spiritual talk or anything like that but i would definitely to me this is what happens when you start having less and less uh spiritualism in people's lives hmm. because whether you're a christian a catholic a muslim a buddhist you know, uh, I mean, hell, name any one of these damn, you know, religious. I, I, people draw their source of morality from that. I truly believe if you leave people to do their own thing and come up with their own sets of guidance like that, we're flawed creatures, man. You know, even when you put the best intentions, sometimes you could really screw it up. Yeah. And then not by like mistake, like just you didn't realize you had that one little vein of greed or narcissism that ran through you. And you're screwing people over and you're being just an overall, you know, D-bag of a person without even realizing it. And I think that, you know, having some type of spiritualism can help, you know, na you know, uh, hone in your moral compass to being a better person. And it seems like we're getting further and further away from that. And I think, in my opinion, that could be a cause of it. Yeah. I mean, for me personally, man, I've tried to like keep that in the back of my head, like at all times or not even in the back, like in the front. Like, try to always remember, like, dude, you got to, like, you got to think of what's going to benefit not only you, but, like, the people around you first, you know what I mean? And, like, a big part of the reason why I was trying to make this huge change in my life was not, like, not even for me, really. It was for the people around me, you know what I mean? For the ones I cared about, I was just tired of pushing people away. But I was like, yeah, I had to take that time to self-reflect and be like, you're the fucking problem. It's not everybody else. It's 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 you that's the problem. And just having that, like, direction and, like, knowing, like, all right, well, co compass calibrated. Now, let's start heading this way. But for what reason? Because a lot of the time, people don't even have the reason to change their life. Like, they don't… There's no… There's no… They feel like there's, they're not going to uh, benefit from it. It's not going to… They're not going to gain from it. But when other people start gaining from the way you're, like, presenting yourself and carrying yourself it actually does directly affect you without you knowing it you think it's only for them but it's like it works on both ends you know what I mean and I think another cool thing about that too is <clears throat> you you know let's say you you've found some areas of yourself that you didn't like and you wanted to rectify the situation you wanted to be a better person right I think another effect that it has on people is it affects the people around you because they see you yeah. making these changes and you and you become someone that they could admire or someone that they they aspire to be like and so now your influence is branching out you know because i mean who doesn't want to you know emulate a successful person or a person with good you know good you know respectful good self-respect you know they carry themselves you know uh, with a good image i think that 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 type of type of stuff is very infectious, and like just I mean hell, dude, like you know with uh, Jordan Peterson, like you may not see it here because you, you know the viewers, you guys may not know me, or you guys don't probably don't know me personally. Some of you, most of you, but I would say my speech has changed a lot in the past couple of years because of the way he speaks, and I want to try to emulate that sort of uh, uh, like. Style. Style, well, style like regalness. He sounds like you know, this guy, he, he sounds smart when he talks, yeah. you know, and he's he's very punctual. He He's articulate. And and so, like, I would say my speech has changed significantly 
in that regard and for the better. It's not harming anybody. And just him being who he is is like, hey, that's that's a nice way to to carry yourself. I want to be like that. Yeah, they, they say like, you know, or be the person that you'd want like your daughter to date or something like that, right? Or like somebody that you would want your 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 child to look up to. Or so, so be that person. You know what I mean? And like try and view yourself as somebody that you you would admire. You know what I mean? And that's hard. That's hard. That's, it's like easier said than done though. Because all the work that comes with it. Like you got to change a lot of shit to be that person. Like you, like all, all the, the things that you, you know and used to know, just they don't, they can't exist anymore on the same, the same, uh, the same plane. You know what I mean? It's got to completely do, you got to do a 180. I've, I've been trying to do a 180 like this whole time, dude. Like I feel like I'm halfway there. What would that be? <laughs> a 540 <90. laughs> or 90 yeah so i'm like i'm like rounding the bases you know what i mean and then like on the the grand scale and the grand scheme of things like on as far as the timeline goes like i have a long way to go but like incremental steps and here's the thing personally i think every time you make a degree yeah farther your clock resets <sighs> why do you say that because in my opinion like for me anyway any progress that I make forward, I want to continue to make. You can always be better. Mm -hmm. And so you, I might traverse the 180 degrees, but in my mind, I'm still at degree one because I'm still trying to change. So you never really catch to that 180. People will see it around you. Yeah. It's like, damn, he was never like this before. He's he's so much of a cooler person to be around. Like, I can actually stand to be around him. He's taught me a lot, whatever the case may be. But for me, it's like, no, nah, I just want to keep that going. I'm not going to stop at 180. I'm going to go 181, 182. So for me, Oh, you mean like, it just keep it just keeps going and going and you're gonna cross that 180 degree change, you know, but you're just gonna you're like, nope, I'm gonna keep improving. And I think that's what people need to do. And have a sense of like, you know, you always hear it be open minded. What is it to be open minded? Well, I, it's called having an ins, an insatiable appetite. There Meaning you go. You never you're get never full. you're never full. You know, you're all you're you're constantly trying to improve, which I think any individual, there's no matter what you do, no matter what stage of enlightenment that you reach, there's always room for improvement, whatever whatever way you slice it. Like there's always room to grow. And that's all. Yeah, I 100% agree. I feel the same way. Like I'll reach one point. Like there's always more I could be doing. You know what I mean? And then, But sometimes you'll have a setback and then that'll reset you. And it's like, well, okay, now I got to, at least I didn't slide as far back, you know, but I know how to get to the next point now because I have the tools that I acquired over the, over the time reaching the next chapter, now I know how to use it. But yeah, like there's like you're never done. I, I don't like to think that you're ever done. Exactly, you know. And I think a and a, um, a massive part of that comes from people's ability to remain open and resilient to new, and to to idea. Well, yeah, you have to be resilient in life, man. Because life is a treacherous woman, and she'll kick you when you're down. And and if you're resilient, you can take those blows and and. You know, make sure that if you get knocked to your knees, you you get back up and keep pushing forward. You know, oh, yeah. and, and uh, have I you had any setbacks lately? Anything? I, I wouldn't call it setbacks. I just been having um, some certain career type uh, endeavors. Yeah, like uh, I I feel there's more I could be doing, and so did you get like complacent? Oh. <laughs> That's that's give that's give me more credit than I'm due. That the, if there's a word greater than complacent, I'd, I'd feel that. Do you get lazy? Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's probably a fair way of putting it. But I, what my my job provides for me is more than I ever thought I would achieve. Uh, so I'm grateful. You yeah. know, I don't want to. You know, people to take what I'm saying as me being ungrateful for the the benefits and things that this job has been able to provide for me. And, uh, but I feel that I'm meant to do more and I want to pursue that. And so I set a goal for myself, uh, to give myself this year to get back into, like, I'm not even talking like just lifting weights. Like I want to be physically fit to run again and I'm going to try for something different. And, I know for this particular endeavor I'm, I want to put in for, I can do the book work. You mm -hmm. know, that's not the issue for me. It's just that I don't want to get DQ'd during the physical portions of it. So I want to give myself every opportunity. What, to, what are we talking here like this? Switching jobs. 
Oh, really? Yeah. I don't I don't want to get a detail because if I end up getting it, I don't want this to be used against gotcha. me later. But um uh I'll tell you. Off, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, but I want to give myself every opportunity not to get DQ'd for something stupid that I can put hundred percent take care of. You know, so now get, you now you have a reason though to want to get into the shape that you were talking about before, right? Uh, to, it, to me, it's a completely different shape. Mm. I just, I want to just be fit again. You know what I'm saying? I want to be able to run because, you know, I can lift weights. I can put the size back on. I can drop the fat, but it's not like I can run forever because you're still walking out with a bunch of mass. So stamina. You know? I want stamina. I need endurance for what I want to go out for. So. Well, just vape a lot and then just. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, uh, but, so I wouldn't say setbacks. I would just say it's been like some, uh, a lot of internal conflict within my head as far as, is this the per- the suit Contem- or the route that contemplation? I, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I want to. Is this the route that I want to take? Um, well, because for you that that's a scary leap, leaving leaving an area of comfort of great comfort. Yeah, great you know, comfort. Some, Not I only mean, that, and the, I mean the potential upside is I will end up loving the job and it, it makes me more money than I'm making now. Um, but it's just it's starting over. You know, because this will be yeah, in a, in like you dip. said, the 180. You go back yeah. to degree zero, and uh, yeah, because I mean. Uh, this, you know, almost been doing this line of work for almost a decade and this will be my, if it all works out, it'll be my third reset. That's good, man. I mean, shit. So, like, you got the consistent part. Yeah. It's just uh, making it happen, you know, and then it goes, you know, I, you know, I got my girlfriend and Well, that's going to come down to how, stuff, so. how bad do you want it, you know? Well, again, I'm doing all this stuff because it's not just me anymore. Yeah. And I, I want to be able to set up a better situation for myself, my girlfriend, the kids. Excuse me. And uh, just, you know, making some, <laughs> dare I say, man-type decisions. Yeah. And they're ones that I'm taking with great consideration. This is, I'm not trying to be impulsive. I, I want to make, you know, make sure if I do this that I'm 100% in it because there's no sense in doing it. And if I'm at 98, 99, I need to be 100%. All systems go, you know, so. Well, I think you've already made some like pretty substantial steps towards that direction. Like you said, you got rid of your car, right? Oh yeah, I did. Like, yeah. dude, that was like I remember I was I was with you when you went to go pick it up. <laughs> you know, right. I drove you yeah, over yeah, there. Yeah, 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 that's right. Like I remember how ecstatic you were to have that car, and like even before that point, all you were talking about was fix fixing up your Mustang and this and that, and then you got your your car that you wanted, and then you hooked it up, you put rim like that was your baby, and then mm. to see you give that up for a purpose that was going to serve somebody else, you know what I mean? You weren't being selfish, so to me that says a lot. You know, man, and. uh to Jordan Peterson's credit, I know I always talk about that damn dude. And I apologize to all it's your you guys spirit for it. animal. But dude, like to his credit, man, you know, he he talks about how taking on more responsibility uh in life fills you with with like a purpose. Yeah. And uh dude, like I everybody asks me, bro, do you miss it? How how bad was it for you to get rid of it? Dude, I have honestly like I see Mustangs on the road and I'll be like, ah, mine was nicer. Whatever, but that's about it, dude. Like but, I don't. But the chapter closed for you, for for that particular. Yeah, you know, but but I I think it was because I was a hundred percent in it. Yeah, yeah, you know, what I'm saying like there was no portion of me that was you know ha- like ah, maybe I shouldn't. You know, I was like, no, I'm gonna do this. I'm ready for it. And, Radical acceptance and accepted it. And I think there was I had that sense of closure. Like it wasn't like there was something left, like uh, unfinished business. You know, I was like, nope, we're moving on to the next thing. And uh, I think that's where I'm at with it, man. It doesn't, you know, it didn't affect me. Granted, it's just a car. But like you said, it was the first time I bought a car brand new off the lot. It was exactly what I wanted. And then the stuff that I wanted to do after it, I did all of that. And so, yeah, it was it was my baby. Uh, hell, my Instagram handle is named after the now car and <laughs> my license plate, you know? Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, it's all about making changes, man. But again, it's all about me, like, I, I did a bunch of financial homework for the 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 truck, um, things like that, and I was a hundred percent in it when I made the decision. And I want to do the same for this potential career change. I just want to make sure that whenever I decide to do it, should I decide to do it, I'm a hundred percent in it mentally. I'm going to dedicate and devote, you know, everything that I can do to this, and not leave anything on the table. Mm-hmm. So, well, I think you're. You're headed in the right direction if that's your goal. You know what I mean? That's because that, I don't know if I can give up my car, man. Yeah, you know, the way I see it, man, is I have my whole life got, you know, God willing to to get another one. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and... 100%. It's not the last... The beautiful thing about this vehicle, man, and the purposes that I purchased the vehicle for, like the first week or two, I put that truck to the use that I bought it for, you know? And uh, it was for having a comfortable ride for myself, the girl, my girlfriend, and the kids. You know, that there's plenty of room back there for them. They're not, you know, it's not... We can go places that you couldn't go in a Mustang. And we we took a nice trip, man, a little family trip, and it was rather enjoyable. So uh, I was like, yep, this is why I got it, just yeah, for this yeah. purpose here. And so and I've been, you know, utilizing it for that ever since and until it decided to grenade itself. <laughs> so. Well, it depends on what brand it is, but yeah. It's uh, a Toyota, ain't going to happen. No, definitely not a Yoda, but it's a Chevy. Oh, well, yeah, you're good. But uh, yeah, man, know. it's 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 cool. But what about you? About your uh, setbacks or contemplations if we got time shit i don't even know we have time for all that dude <laughs> we're already 45 minutes in oh we can we should normally go to like what buck 30 right uh, i'd rather not i think i'd rather just keep it at an hour just for editing purposes oh, okay. Oh, okay yeah okay. Yeah, yeah you know what i mean gotcha. but well, i don't know man it's a i mean set i feel like i've had like i mean i want to say like the biggest setback that i've had other than you know m- me coming to hate my job um is slowly but surely over time, you know what I mean? Uh, I mean, if you guys have forgotten or whatever reason, but I still have bipolar disorder, like it didn't go anywhere. <laughs> like it's still there. And uh, for a good while, man, like I, I was like just pretty baseline for a good while just because I've been on top of my fitness, on top of my dieting, everything. You know what I mean? I never really had any like too serious of symptoms, you know, but like these this last month in particular, like I want to say around December, Maybe like November, towards the end of November, all through December. Just my shit's just been jacked up, man. Like my moods, uh, my depression, we'll put it that way. The lows have been really low. And uh, do you need something to spit? Um, the lows have been really low, man. And it's just like, to put it mildly, like I, I felt myself slipping into the part of my life and that mindset that I that I had before I started all this. And before I started evolving like mentally and like really, really changing myself. And I felt myself wanting to go back into that. You know what I mean? And then the 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 environment that, uh, you know, I decided to put myself in retail, you know, it didn't help at all. You know, it just made it worse. And then I really started my feeling myself backsliding, you know. But um, again, like I have to think of the bigger picture, man. And like how bad do I want it? And like think of the benefits that come with me bettering myself and me and my fiance just had this talk, you know, again this morning uh, through text. It was nothing serious. It's just something that uh, we were discussing. It had to do with the podcast and everything like that. But um, she basically, you know, she was telling me how proud of, proud of me she was for coming as far as I did. And like I said, we're about two months away from my, we'll say one year transformation, you know, and um, like she's never told me that before. And I don't need to hear that. I don't need the accommodation you know i don't i don't need to be reminded i just i just do it and i know she cares um but it's nice to hear it and it's nice reassurance it is reassurance and i'm I'm glad that she told me that you know what i mean and i also told her like hey yeah a big a huge part of the reason i would say more than half way more than that three quarters of it is because of her you know what i mean because of my family and everything and wanting to change um but just slipping into that like depress. it's like i don't want to be there and i could i could really tell what like triggers it now like it's eating bad. It's like <laughs> alcohol and this and that. It's like none of that shit. And then also my my environment. It really, really affects me. And like it will put me down the wrong path. It's like so the lifestyle that I have been living, which was just like really schedule oriented, keeping myself super busy, uh, busting my ass at the gym, uh, trying to eat healthy and just, you know, just keeping myself busy all around uh, really, really keeps all those uh, symptoms at bay. You know what I mean? But um it, it it just got to a point, man. Sometimes where it's just like, you know what I mean. Like I do want to let it all go sometimes, but I know I I know that that can't happen. Like it's it's not gonna happen. I won't allow it to happen. Um, that's why I got I I don't know if you've seen it, but I got a tattoo on my stomach. Oh, ambition. Yeah. So originally it was supposed to be. But that hurt. It hurt like a motherfucker, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was originally supposed to be because I wanted to get a Tupac tribute tattoo, right? And um, I didn't want to get his uh, portrait on me. I just thought it was a little corny to get another man of a portrait. You know what I mean? I don't know. I just didn't… I didn't want to do it. So I, was, I took one of his song titles, you know, Ambitions. And um, 
But that word for me means a lot. You know what I mean? And I just feel like if I've if there's ever one word that could describe me throughout my whole life, I feel like that would have been the word because I, I'd never been really like naturally talented at shit, whether it was music or whatever, sports, in the gym, whatever. I had never been like naturally inclined to like do that stuff. So the thing that got me to get good at things was ambition. You know what I mean? So I felt like it was a word that really described me. And um, I got to remember why I got that tattoo. You know what I mean? So it's like, I got to keep that in the, the forefront of my mental I hope so too. People are like, hey, where'd you get that tattoo? Oh, I don't remember why I got this word tattooed across my stomach. No, yeah, it's like it's a big part of me, and <laughs> no, it no, always has been. It's just like if I could ever get one word that would describe. No, but me. I, I think you do encapsulate what that word means. You know, ca- encapsulate it as, in, as in, within a person. Yeah. You know, I, I forgot what podcast we were. I was listening to. It was one of our last two. I think. Yeah, I remember like, you telling me something like this too. Like, dude, like. <clears throat> You've put in so much work when it comes to music, and you've had a lot of naysayers along the way, and things didn't pan out in the fashion that you would have hoped for the amount of work that you put into, you know, your music career. And I, in my, I mean, again, everyone, like I said in that previous podcast, you know, success is, you know, um, based on everyone's perception of what that might be. It's a, it's a very subjective topic. But I think that you did more than most people could ever dream to do with something that they call art and that they have their passion for. Yeah. Yeah, like... Like, there's been plenty of people that I know that have art degrees and I wouldn't pay... I wouldn't let them pay me to take one of their paintings. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, even like... When, even when people ask me, like, at work, because no one really even knew that I did music for the longest time. But it's like, if the subject comes up, I'm going to say, you know... And it's like, even when I'm telling people sometimes, I don't... I'm like, uh, that's... Like, I wouldn't believe me, like, if I was telling you. You know what I mean? Like, I just feel like... I don't know. I could just never accept it. But the the amount of like work and effort that I, w- I put in towards music is like now I'm putting in towards getting myself into like top physical condition, you know, again. Because like how many times have we talk about it, man, where I mentioned, oh, I lost this much weight and blah, blah, blah again. I was like, bro, I'm fucking sick and tired of talking about it. I need to be about it now. Like it's time to do it. Like I even vlogged it. You know what I mean? Like I have the vlog, which I'm trying to put together a bunch of clips of me talking about it. And then like when I get to the point where I feel like I'm um, not… You said it enough. Let's cont- just get to be about it. No, not not content. But with like when I can like… When I look huge. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like when I look how I want to look. Then mm. I'm going to put all those clips together and then do the transformation video. You know what I mean? Because I have a bunch of clips about it. But like it, that was like the biggest turning point in my life right there. I Like I vlogged in here. I was like, all right, like I need to have this this first healthy meal. And this is kind of like where it's all going to start. And sure enough, that's where it started, you know. But I'm putting that amount of ambition and like dedication into that. Now it's like I found my new music. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Okay. Like my new music now is being fit, you know. And, and that's, that's, just, that's what I was trying to tell you, man. Like if anyone's going to… That's what <sighs> that word's like perfect for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I… I'm thinking hard, bro. I would say the only thing that I probably ever put that much attention into or ambition into, you know, was driven like that was paintball. Oh, yeah. Senior year of high school. You know, and that was because the guys that I was playing with basically thought I sucked, which I did. Mm. And my saving grace in that was Sean, my cousin. You come this a little bit. Yeah, he basically said, if you guys want him out, I'm out. And Sean was a baller. Oh, he was good. Yeah, and yeah. so uh, he was like, "Well, if you if he goes, I'm out." So they're like, "Well, I guess we're stuck with him because we need you." And but that probably hit like struck a certain. Oh, dude, yeah. Here. I mean, it sucks to to be told that you're the you know you're the shitty person on the team, you know. But that fueled me, you know. And the last tournament that we played in, uh, Sean was the captain. He was like, "Bro, you've been balling hard as hell. This like we want you to do like the." Long story short, we got into a tie tiebreaker, and they wanted me to be the person to play for the tiebreaker. Uh-huh. And uh, and that was Sean's like, dude, you've been on fire. You're the person for it, you know. And so to me, it was kind of like, but aside from that, man, I don't think there's. I wouldn't say ambition is a word that I would use to describe some of my my attributes. Mm. You know, like I I mean like in in cause I've never put the amount of effort into something that you put into music. You know, if I'm comparing it like that. Oh, okay. You know, like, there. if if I get some feed, like, pushback, I'm like, yeah, you know what, this made it for me, I'll switch it. It's not a big deal. You know, but I've, like, the only thing that I've ever probably would have done it with was trying to be a pilot, and I don't have the eyes to do it. So there's you nothing I physically, physically can do yeah. it. You know, so, 
everything else has just been like, yeah, I can get it done. But to be like, hey, you know, your if my eyes would have let me and they said, hey, you needed to maintain this way, do miles in this amount of time, be good at math, like I would have put would have been a given, yeah. You know, I would have done everything I could to make that, a, or at least tried to make that a, a, a that dream come true. So yeah. But when it comes to that word ambition, dude, like, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there are things that, that I'm not giving myself credit for. I don't know. It doesn't seem like it. But for ambition, dude, like, to go to the music industry as cutthroat as you just made it sound with that couple minutes you spoke on it about the example a little while ago, to be put, to willingly put yourself through that and then to willingly have, I mean, I remember you told me that there was, again, I don't want to throw your stuff out there, but that contractual issue you had oh, with yeah. that show. Yeah. You know, where they totally took advantage of you know, your lack of legal guidance. Yeah, or knowledge. In that you know, matter. and so, uh, like, and, but to still, okay, well, that sucks, but hey, what am I going to do about it? Cry about it or am I going to keep pushing forward, you know? So, yeah, dude, ambition, you know, I would say is a, a, a good word that and I that, would and, say accurately. And that's just you. how I've been about everything in my life, though. Anything that I'm drawn to is, like, for whatever reason, man, I don't know what, it, it's got to be genetics or something like that, but I just, like, no matter what I'm doing, like, I have to put 110 into it because I don't ever want to, like, whatever I'm doing, I can't put half ass shit out there. Like, even this podcast, man. Like, you should have seen me when I first started this shit with Victor Jr. Like, obsessed, bro. Like, to put it mildly. Okay, so to take a page out of your book, that's how I am. Whenever I get into something, yeah. like, I, I get 100% involved. I'm not going to, you know, dance around the idea. I'm not going to. If I got to do something, I'll do it. Like, so, but I don't know if I would, for me, I don't just seem like that. Maybe my interpretation or understanding of the word ambition is wrong, but like, I, I, I think we mentioned, I don't know if it was on here or just amongst our, each other, mm -hmm. but what you're saying, like, whenever I don't like doing half ass stuff, I don't like putting out a crappy product. If I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it right and then mm -hmm. I put 100% effort into it. Maybe that is ambition shit. I'm just dumb. <laughs> but I'm, I'm the same way, man. I understand you completely. Yeah. I've, and I've always been like that. So like long story short, I, I was like, I had been thinking for a, a long time I've been wanting to get a tattoo. And uh, it's not even done yet, honestly. Like I didn't put it this way. I didn't get what I wanted. Like as far as the tattoo goes. So I was kind of like unhappy about it when it happened. But like it's on there now. So like all I can do is try and uh, add to it and maybe make it look a little more full. Like, the only thing that really bothers me about it is these little things right here. You didn't like them or you I want don't more? Like, yeah, I don't like them. I'd rather just have the… I was going for the, you know, Conor McGregor kind of oh, look. Oh, like okay, okay. The plain blasted look on there. Like, the, how the UFC fire… I just… I wanted it like that. You know what I mean? I wanted it to be clear and concise of what I was saying. You know, I just like… I like that style of tattoo. But when it came out the way it did… Um, I was like, it doesn't look done to me. Like, I mean, people that I've asked, it looks incomplete. You know what I mean? So I I, I want to go back again and um and try and like complete it, you know. But <laughs> yeah, like to put it mildly, that shit hurt, bro. <laughs> it hurt a lot. Like I didn't I didn't think it was gonna hurt as much as it did. Like my <sighs> butt cheeks were clenched the whole time. I'd imagine, man, like getting my work done around my wrist and the bend of the elbow, that hurt. And I had somebody that got some chest work done. He goes, bro, it was the most. He's like, I wouldn't want to walk out of there, and he's blasted. <laughs> And so I was like, the stomach? Yeah, it's pretty sensitive. Probably thin skin, so I'm sure it hurt. Bro, and at the time too, like, all right, like, I I only weighed like 144 or something like that. So I had like no fat on my stomach. Through the holidays, I probably gained like three pounds or something like that. But I had zero fat on my stomach. Like, had a, like I can show you the picture of my six pack. Like, it's fucking bulging. <laughs> There's nothing on there that was preventing it. Like, there was no padding. So it was like, I was just taking shots like every… 10 minutes or something like that. Just like I killed a whole bottle of like whiskey. <laughs> like, damn, dude. Like, I had Putting to, dude. In work. Like, yeah, it, it just hurt a lot. But I would do it again, put it that way. Like, I'll go back and like finish it. You know what I mean? I would love to. But we're at an hour now. I'll wrap it up. We can. I mean, we, if you wanted to, we can do another one. I'm down. Okay. Um, weird getting back into the groove of things. I mean, towards oh, okay. towards, it'll, towards it'll, the end there, it started feeling a little more normal again, like muscle memory. Uh, it's repetition, just, riding a bike. Yeah. I just never knew how to wrap these up in general. <laughs> well, cue the music and I'll, I'll end it with a quote that I really like. Uh, <sighs> um, I'll cue the music and post edit. All right. Well, you can go ahead and just end it. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to leave you guys with this. It's a quote from my boy, JP. And it says, an overemphasis on your certainty puts you in a prison that bars you from the well you need to drink from. Say it again. 
An overemphasis on your certainty puts you in a prison that bars you from the well you need to drink from. Bars you? Like imprisons you. Imprisons you from the well you need to drink from. An overemphasis, an overemphasis on your… Certainty. Certainty. Meaning… Basically, you being close-minded… Like how, how certain you are of something. Like your, your point of view on something. That it's that's going to put you into a cage and the well you need to drink from to expand. So don't be set in your ways. Don't be set in your ways. I agree. I thought that was an outstanding quote. Yeah, yeah. I mean… The dude's full of gems though. I mean, granted, it wasn't a quote. He was just in the middle of a lecture. Oh, he just said it. just said it and I replayed the video a couple times and wrote it down. Uh Uh-huh. Well, shout out JP, man. That was was a good one, man. Oh, how about this too? All right, so David Goggins. You know Goggins, right? Yep. He, um… I know personally. He's a cool guy. (laughs) He's been posting all these, uh, like, transformations. And, uh, like, all the people have just been tagging… Goggins, they post their transformation on their story and then they put stay hard and hashtag. Like that's his saying, stay hard. And um I was like, let me try and get my shit reposted. So I posted one that I, I uh previously posted in October from, mm-hmm. from March to October, my little transformation. And uh he saw my shit, but he never reposted. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Look at it. But just to see him like the fact that he looked at it. I was like, "Oh shit, David Goggins looked at my shit, bro. Like he's seen it, but he didn't repost it." So That's I don't, right. I don't, I don't know why. But come on, Goggins, get with the program, dog. But like, look at that, bro. Like he's like he's looking at my shit. That's that's, t- that's crazy, it's right? A little check mark and everything, bro. Yeah, I don't know why he didn't repost it. Anyway, it is what it is, and I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna stay hard out of the way. So there you go. <laughs> I'm gonna stay bricked up. So. Brick <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, we're gonna conclude this episode of the PO3 podcast. Uh, I know it's been a while, but uh, just know that we want to continue to do this. And uh, here in the near future, um, I have a little surprise. So we're going to keep going. And that, the surprise is not for you guys. It's for me. So <laughs> I'll tell John off air you know, what's going to happen. <laughs> but yeah, so just know right. that I'll, I'll have the time to keep doing this. So, But uh, with that said, um, what did I used to say? Like, scare, subscribe. Oh, yeah. Else. Like, subscribe, <laughs> <laughs> drop a comment. Again, um, Luhan Gaming. Oh yeah, shout out to Luhan Gaming. Always dropping through in the comment section. I appreciate it, man. Um, with, with no further ado, I'll let you guys go. But we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.